Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Diablo 4. For level 51, we're going to try and push ourselves up to level 53 uh, so that we can start gambling for Razor Plate. We've got a hell of a lot of obols. Uh, might be enough for us to get something interesting. Uh, but honestly, chances are always going to be a little bit slim. Uh, so we want to be pushing through our Nightmare Dungeons. I'll probably salvage up uh, the lower tiers. We'll go for a, a, a tier 3 uh, because being level 51 that should give us the maximum XP possible. Uh, so what have we got? Elites always have suppressors. That's going to make them easy to find and they do additional cold damage. How's our cold resist? That's not bad actually. So this is a good option for us. We we'll use the one iron barb elixir that I have and travel to the Vault of the Forsaken. We're going to need to make some more potions soon. Uh, that might mean spending some time going around gathering resources. Uh, but we should have plenty of Howler Moss from having done the Blood Harvest consistently for a very long period. So maybe, maybe we'll just be able to do some conversions. Either way, getting uh, getting razor plate would drastically change our game because of the amount of thorns it adds on. Deathwish uh, aspect right now gives us three thousand ish thorns, and that that does a significant amount to most of the mobs. Hey, there's a paragon point. Carry on pushing up towards the legendary node. Uh, we need to kill all enemies here, so it's worth us taking the time to to be not just efficient but safe about this. They've got that damage resistance in there, but there's also that blooming trap underneath them. I really don't want to get caught by it. Yeah, that thing there. Especially when it's surrounded by mobs. Very easy to not spot it and then get caught out by it. Let's get the ultra thorns from our berserk. Took him down so quickly. Nope, not gonna be in the middle of that while you explode. Let's get back round. Kill some of these guys. I thought elites were always supposed to have the suppressor aspect. Maybe, maybe it's just ones that are placed in the dungeon by the dungeon itself, rather than ones that spawn naturally during the course of play. Hang a left. Splendid chest, this one wasn't trapped. I'm out of fury. Although it also did not have much in it. Just one thing remains, which is this deck hand. There we go. Barriers dispelled. Let's move on. Yeah, that is actually 
already really painful. Mostly because of all the traps around the edge, but getting pushed back into them has the uh, potential to cause all kinds of trouble. should check what level mobs it is we're fighting. 57, so this is actually perfect for us right now. I say perfect in terms of experience, not in terms of danger, of course. when things are super dangerous we always have that chance of dying a little bit of hemomancy finish these guys off that might have been a bit excessive uh, so we need to slay the captain and his mates and that will actually take us to level 52 Two handed swords is already up to rank five. When you're dealing that large amount of damage, having extra damage coming in because of the uh, uh, the bleeding just really doubles down on it. There's level 52. Got a new glyph, which we probably don't care about, but I'll check it out nevertheless. Uh, let's put our point in. One, two, three, four, five more will get us there. In fact, let's have a look at that disembowel. Increasing bleeding damage. Killing a bleeding enemy has a 10% chance to reduce cooldowns for effectively our shouts. That's not bad. It's something we'll probably try and squeeze in somewhere. Right, just one guy left to kill. Getting right in the middle of all that trusting needle flare to go off. And then doing our maximum death wish aspect for thorns. It's very satisfying. Oh no. <laughs> that's uh, that's very trapped. At least we've got the chamber key. Let's just push in and deal with this lady. Sanctum of the Sea Hag. Yeah, that was painful. It's an unusual situation because we don't really want to be getting hit by her, but we need her to be hitting us if we're going to kill her quickly. Let's uh, get that amulet. We've got, a, we've got a sacred ring out of that, so that's that's pretty nice. Points go into revenge. It's not quite enough to level it up, but it's, uh, it's good. So this was a tier 3. Tier 3 is the perfect one for extra XP but we can get more um, 
experience for our glyphs if we go at a higher level. So what's this ring? Extra damage for each second you stand still. It's not great, but the 11% physical damage is actually really quite amazing. The extra vulnerable damage as well. Extra damage to injured enemies is so-so. Barrier generation is so-so. This is probably worth us um, swapping over to and then imprinting with the other whirlwind one that we have. Uh, and this, I think, will probably just salvage up the amulet. Plus one to rank of all defensive skills. That's always nice. Extra crowd control duration doesn't really help us. Extra dexterity, extra intelligence. Percentages is always fine, but it's not. It's not special. It's not a. Not a sacred one. So we'll just salvage that up. So up over here. The cultist. Let me show you. Well, when critical strike chance goes up, same as we had before, effectively, it's just it's going to be, you know, slightly better. Uh, ooh, and we do have a couple of fiend roses, so we could get rid of that barrier generation and make it something better. Uh, extra damage to close enemies. That's amazing. Okay, we're definitely upgrading this. Uh, right, where's the jeweler? Jeweler's just round here. So, add socket. Do that first. Color and brilliance. And then upgrade. You know what? We may as well max this one out. That's pretty solid. 7.5% resist all. 7.5% lightning resist. And then we've got the vulnerable damage, the physical damage, damage to close enemies, and damage to injured enemies. It's it's pretty stonking. Uh, let's get ourselves a new diamond to go in it. Although we could have just extracted that old one. Right, let's salvage up stuff. And we'll go back in and do another. Uh, did we want to extract any of these? I don't think so. No. We could upgrade these just a little bit, because they are sacred. We could also enchant that uh, two ranks of Hammer of the Ancients onto something else. Even if we only do four of them. In fact, we've got plenty, we've got plenty of Coiling Wards. It's just the critical Strike chance is not amazing, but a couple of uh, ranks doesn't hurt for upgrading. Use it well. All right, that that went well. So what did we get? We got another tier three. Let's uh, go and do another tier three. Shock lance, elite, and poison damage might be a little bit more painful. Maybe there's no one in this one. We need to slay some enraged spirits, which means finding some enraged spirits. Don't have enough fury. 
That is the first one. Jeez, I think we just did 15,000 in thorns damage. Constant poison damage from everything. That's going to get old quickly. I do like our chance to... Uh, uh, what are we up to on this? I thought Lucky Hit Chance would have been higher than 20% because of our pole arm mastery. Let me just double check over here. Pole arm expertise. 10% increased damage while healthy. That's fine. Oh, right. That's because I didn't bother selecting it. There we go. Still hasn't uh, updated it, but we were not getting the, uh, the benefit from that. Well, we really want to be. Because our build relies, well, not so much relies. It works a lot better with those uh, those lucky hits. Whether it's lucky hit to stun, lucky hit to um, extend berserking duration. Drink that because it's in the nearby area. I don't know if it'll end up feeling more obvious, but uh, but knowing that we have the uh, the maths in the right place is uh, kind of important. channeling which means we basically shout about everything all the time new glyph blood feeder that does sound like my kind of thing A non-cursed resplendent chest. Oh, this does feel like we've got a lot of uh, a lot of very powerful things going for us right now. Um, you know what? Let's uh, let's go up this one a bit. Enraged Spirit. Just top up our health and we'll push on. So at this point we're more interested in the glyph experience than character experience. Because uh, we need to get our glyph up to rank 15, which is just going to be absolutely monumental effort to do that. Handed sword rank six. Even more bleeding damage going out to the enemies. Uh, let's go around this edge. Ready yet. 
enemy horde, so we'll try and get some damage reduction in. And dodge around these guys a little bit. Having the biggest sword means we're going to be adding more thorns damage by way of flay and, uh, and our other abilities, our passive abilities. No thank you on the uh, damage reduction aura. That just seems like a bit of a cheaty way of doing things. Straight in, take out the guy with the damage reduction aura. Ooh, that's getting quite painful. Let's uh, let's move around that. We've got Paragon Point we can put in. Yeah, just a nasty combination of elites really in there. We've got a little bit of berserking. We can let the thorns do its job. And really, that's why we want the uh, legendary node, because uh, this is going to give us a uh, ten percent chance to get berserking when uh, when we kill a bleeding enemy. And we're always killing bleeding enemies. I think he actually bled out while in bat form, which is always uh, always fun to see. Right, let's uh, do this pack with berserking. Those are gone. We must be nearly down to the last batch. Yeah, 18 remain. Enemy horde incoming. And we can move forwards. Let's uh, go back to the door. Move forwards, go back. I mean, it's technically, technically correct. Kill that rat on the way through. No one likes rats. And fight the resurrected malice. Over half dead already. There we go. So simple when he targets you with everything. <coughs> okay. Uh, all this is going to go into revenge. Uh, and also, we got a little bit of bonus XP uh, from, from that, which is very nice. We don't have any more XP to put in. Uh, but revenge is up to a 28% increase in the nodes. So we're getting an extra 5.6% physical damage, armor, and strength from it. That's uh That's pretty good between between all of it. Right, what was the blood feeder? 5% increased critical strike chance against bleeding enemies. Oh, that's quite nice. If if we got up to the uh, the point 
dealing increased damage to bleeding targets. Everything is bleeding for us. So that's a really, really good potential one. Of course, that's way down the line because we'd, uh, we'd need to get a hell of a lot of uh, resources in order to, to do that. Uh, we'll just salvage all of these up. Nothing here is particularly interesting for us. And then I think we'll uh, we'll probably go to the Blood Harvest just for the last teeny bit of this uh, level. And then we'll come back and do some gambling. Need something for it? But yeah, that, that sword under the hammer. This sword under the hammer. Let's have a look at this properly. It's got the same effect, it's just not as much damage reduction. <clears throat> it's not going to be part of our final thing, but overall, it has flat damage reduction, fire resistance, and quite a bit more armor. That gives us another 6% physical damage reduction swapping across to it. I think that's worth it. Uh, it means we're going to need to put a whole batch of divinity on it, but it's still still worthwhile. Let's do a couple of upgrades on it. And yeah, we can't extract that, so we may as well just keep what it is. Okay, all of our packs are activated again. Uh, let's keep putting up Jagged Spikes. And Flowing Veins. Right, you can salvage this up for me. It was only a rare that we, uh, we changed over. Where is the Blood Harvest at the moment? Over in Kedbardu. We go grab a couple of Blood Seekers quickly. <clears throat> there might be other things that we can uh, do in this area, but just getting that tiny bit of XP is highest on the list. We could get a couple more ovals. That would also be amusing. Just before it all kicks off. Only another 30 seconds to keep killing these things. There goes one. And all the others, 19 seconds. Three seconds, it's not even going to make it to him in time. <clears throat> I must wait. Well, he's going to bleed out. Vampires have taken notice of us, that's pretty nice. That is slightly more ovals than we can carry, but I don't mind. Two more 
paragon points. Let's go find some blood seekers. Yeah, when we're berserking, everything dies as soon as it touches us. I think we'll actually just summon the Bloodseekers over here. Get them done quickly. And in a controlled manner. I'm low on fury. Especially if it's gonna relocate in five minutes. A little bit painful, but we got them taken out. So, whisper silenced. What's that ring? Uh, walking Arsenal, and that one's Hammer the Ancients. So, it might relocate in five minutes, but there's nothing I'm to stop us. Just staying here and doing more killing of things. Let's try and get this massive thing gone while we've got our berserk on. Vampires see us as a threat. Our only, prob uh, our only problem at the moment is we have a tendency to alpha strike things, uh, which is great. But um, it does mean that we are kind of vulnerable after that. Two-handed sword, rank seven. Looks like there's something just up here. Let's uh, investigate that. Berserking, get that thorns damage up nicely. Love it when the uh, the guy with the damage reduction aura is ranged. Packs. Really, we've got so many keys. I feel like that's what we should be spending. All right, vampires are hunting us. They've got two minutes to try and actually find us and get the blood seekers across to us. Here they come. One gone, two gone. Very satisfying. Still got a minute and a half. Can we get the last of this XP? We might not be able to, we might need to move on somewhere else. But if that's what we gotta do, that's what we gotta do. large part of the XP actually comes from uh, completing the Whispers. So we've got 56 seconds, so might be enough time. 
to do some more big groups. Or big mobs, if not big groups. And leave the iron chunk and instead come up for the blood boils. I'm out of fury. Get that blood lure. There is 13 seconds remaining. Hey, there's level 53. And we got the whisper silenced. Okay, so we can head back to the tree of whispers. That's perfect timing. That is so perfect timing. Uh, so first things first, we have this uh, point we can put in. I'm going to put it in Dexterity. And that's because of its proximity to the... Uh, it is done. Uh, let's go for boots on this. Uh, that's because of its proximity to this legendary... Uh, uh, sorry, Glyph Socket over there. We have Blood Rage. We have Blood Rage. That is one of our big objectives. Grab all these things, and we're going to go and uh, and gamble. The boots of slaughter don't care about them. The conceited bone breaker conceited was part of my original plan, but it is not anymore. So that's just going to go under the hammer as well. Uh, we're going to go do some gambling. And we're going to ask for chest piece after chest piece after chest piece in the hopes that we get something a bit special. I'm half tempted to instead ask for um, one-handed weapons to try and get something Skullbreaker, but if we could get Razor Blade, that would be amazing. You can't be serious, Tomorrow's. Morgan's folly is lost. Okay, Tunix. Going back is this isn't like before. This isn't for the fort for Azarath. Straight off, that's that's pretty nice. Oh, very nice. It seems your prayers have been answered. That's even better. Keep going. Fair bitter. It seems your prayers have been answered. Hit chance, but it's uh, not a sacred thing. Hmm. Extra damage reduction for bleeding enemies. That's what we've got at the moment. Oh, bad luck. <laughs> Try again. It seems your prayers have been answered. Perfect roll on the berserking. That's good. That's very good. We're going to want that to be up on our amulet. Oh, it seems your prayers have been answered. That's a really low roll on the barrier generation. Hmm, not much. It seems your prayers have been answered. Hmm. Extra damage with dual wielded weapons is nice. Extra damage with bludgeoning weapons, not so much. Very nice. It seems you're oh, bad luck. And this Crowded Try Sage. Again. Crowded Sage is fine. Um, but really, that's uh that's a little bit disappointing across the board. So let's let's put all the sacred ones together so we can take a proper look at them. 
So damage reduction from distant enemies, that's nice. Barrier generation, mm. damage with skills that swap to new weapons. Mm. This is probably the nicest. And it's got the five second immunity bubble on it. Which means we could uh, we could say, you know, swap out our trousers for something else. So the immunity bubble isn't really what we're going for. It is still overall a better better bit of armor. What effect would that have on our resistances? And bring our shadow resistance up, drop off our resistance a little. So it's not too bad. We could extract the current thing. I'm not sure if it's worth switching over to though. Given we are looking specifically for razor plate. No. Uh we'll we'll extract this and we'll salvage up the rest. That's what we'll do. Still, all we can do is keep hunting and uh and keep trying. We saved up the obels so we had the potential. Uh, but that's never going to be a guarantee. So we don't care about that barrier. We could extract that because it's a perfect roll. Do we have a spare perfect roll already? Yes, we do. Still, it wouldn't hurt to have another. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. This is the same as our current one. I mean, this is... It's a bit lower on the armor, but it's got better overall things because it doesn't have that uh, damage with skills that swap to new weapons. It does have brawling skill damage on it, though. But the other stats are just a little bit better. It would mean spending some upgrades on it, but it's just a couple of upgrades. That? And swapping over our uh, Divinity. That's the other thing we're going to need to do. This can go... This can go... Right, so those two are going to get salvaged. Uh, sorry, uh, extracted. Come back if you need the forge. We have a tier 3, tier 2, those are fine. Let's spend some of our blood. I'm not going to have uh, as much time uh, to play this episode, so we'll just wrap up here in town, I think. With the last couple of bits and bobs. Almost got a cursed touch up to the next level. That's uh, That's really quite satisfying. Uh, upgrade, that's what I was going to do. So, upgrade the armor. Rare, so One, two, three, four. At least it's an improvement on, on what it had. 4.9% damage reduction is pretty nice. The forge is always hot. Let's get the acid on this. And uh, we needed five divinity on it. We go powers are all activated again now as we're level 53 uh new and interesting things are going to be dropping so definitely keen to be uh finding them let's uh organize this right so that one is now better enough that we could put this Relentless on an amulet as soon as we get a decent amulet. That no 
may as well stay there because those two are directly linked. We're never going to use Iron Skin. That can go. We'll just leave it out. And yeah, we had a we had a better barrier drop already from something else. Still not really interested in it though. It's not going to be part of our final build. Another happy customer. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's probably going to be it for this episode. Um, we could potentially do a bit of upgrading on this ring. That was the only thing that I had remaining. Or if we no, we've already uh, done that to the max. Right, yeah, because that one can have five and that one can have four. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so uh, so plans for the future. Now that we have this uh, Blood Rage node, uh, we want to pull across and get extra damage while berserking, extra berserking duration, uh, extra berserking duration from, from these, and probably damage while berserking like all around there. Pushing across and getting the fire resistance uh, makes a lot of sense. Getting the extra damage to bleeding enemies also makes a lot of sense. And then damage reduction from bleeding enemies. So we're going to go this way. Then we're going to go that way. Then we're going to go that way up to this socket. And then across to here. So it's going to be a while before we move across to the next Paragon board. In this socket we're probably going to put something like Blood Feeder. Uh, increased critical strike chance against bleeding enemies is going to be great. Because everything is always going to be bleeding. Um, we just need to get the dexterity in and around it uh which is really going to be a challenge but should be doable yeah we've got 14 dexterity there and then there'll be uh, there'll be others nearby as we improve its radius so thank you very much for coming along i do hope you have enjoyed this as always if you have be sure to give a big thumbs up if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so, and you'll be told when the next episode goes live. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for some more Diablo 4. See you soon.